Tonight, Amazon's earning news, Apple versus Samsung, and we tell you who will win the Super Bowl. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 264 for January 29th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. With integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, cover pages, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. It's the week of earnings calls, and today it was Amazon's turn. After the markets closed, the company reported profits, $214 million to be exact. They also beat Wall Street's earnings expectations, citing Amazon Prime as the reason behind their success. Now, Amazon Prime is a huge part of their business because of the $99 subscriber fee and also because members spend nearly double the amount that non-members do. So in case you're wondering, does that Amazon Prime subscription make me spend more? It does. Amazon also said that if you want an Amazon Fire Phone, they have a couple billion sitting around in storage and they'll be happy to sell you one for a few bucks. That's not true. I just made that part up. Office, office everywhere for everyone. Microsoft launched a few new apps today on Android and iOS. The Office for Android apps have been around for a while, but they're officially no longer in preview. You can download and use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint for Android to open and edit documents for a month for free. After that, you'll have to sign up for an Office 365 subscription plan. The apps will work much like their iOS counterparts. And speaking of iOS, Microsoft also released a new version of Outlook for iOS that includes easy access to attach files not only from OneDrive, but Dropbox, Google Drive, and iCloud. Now, this is Microsoft's rebranded version of Accompli, the much-loved geek email app that Microsoft acquired last month. The FCC has changed the definition of broadband. Today, the Federal Communications Commissions voted to increase the definition of broadband internet from 4 megabits per second to 25 megabits per second download speed. That means that triple the number of households in the United States are now officially without broadband internet, and any internet ser service provider whose services fall below that standard can no longer call their services high speed. Now, this, of course, was the week of the iPhone. I think by last count, every person in the world owns two of them. So what does this mean for Samsung? We've invited Steve Kovac, senior editor at Business Insider, to talk about the Apple-Samsung smartphone rivalry. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Hey, thanks for having me. So who's winning? Who's winning? Well, right now, I, well, I want to caution, first of all, today I wrote, you know, that the Samsung, you know, their best days are behind them. And I want to caution that I was talking specifically about the mobile business. Um, but Apple clearly, I mean, they've, by a quarter strategy analytics, that research firm, um, they're now shipping almost, if not more phones last quarter uh, than Samsung did, which is incredible. If you look back two years ago, uh, Samsung's profits were up 76%. They were blowing it away. Wall Street Journal ran that famous article, has Apple lost its cool to Samsung? And then, oh boy, like what a difference two years makes. Samsung profits down 27% last quarter. Um, Apple record quarter, 18 billion in profit. Most of that due uh, to the iPhone because of the iPhone. Um, and so it's it, the tables have completely turned. And I think, um, you know, Samsung got two years of, of a free ride while um, Apple kind of sat on its thumbs and uh, waited to release the big screen iPhone. And, uh, it's it's really killing Samsung now. Right. So it's usually people copying Apple, but this time Apple was kind of copying Samsung. Yeah, and it's not just the copying thing. I mean, you want to say, okay, fine, they they relate to the big screen trend. They totally were. I mean, it, it, there's no doubt about that. But you also want to t look at the the rest of the mobile landscape and where they're competing now. And uh, emerging markets like China are so important. And right now you look at the Xiaomi's of the world who have figured out how to make these really great Android devices. They're just as beautiful as the iPhone. They, they, they look w great. They, they have the high end specs, just like any good galaxy phone, but they cost half as much. So people are gravitating towards those devices and, and skipping the Samsung galaxy phones. And that's really crushing Samsung now. Um, whereas the iPhone, people are still willing to pay that premium for there's something special. There's something unique about the iPhone, uh, that, 
can differentiate enough that people are willing to spend literally twice as much as an Android phone for it. So that's that's such an interesting story to look at how just Samsung is just completely uh, just taking a nosedive in the last year because uh, they don't have any way to differentiate their devices from the zillions of other Android phone models out there. Right. So uh, explain these numbers to me. Apple said they sold 74.5 million iPhones last quarter, and Samsung said between 71 and 76 million. Um, well, what's the real story? Well, you get, also the way these companies report are kind of funky. Like Sam, uh, Apple reports actual sales, like how many phones like got into people's hands, mm -hmm. whereas Samsung reports shipments, and they're kind of vague. You know, they give that like uh, window of how many we might have shipped or sold. Um, so it's 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 really tough to tell. And you also got to keep in mind that Samsung doesn't make, whereas Apple makes three or four models of the iPhone, uh, Samsung has dozens of, of smartphone models. So they, they just flood the market. And, you know, for years they've been accused of just shipping more than they actually sell to kind of stuff their numbers and these earnings. But now it's kind of catching up to them. Right. So now at CES we saw the rounded screen and some, I mean, is there anything else that you think Samsung has in its pocket at this point? I, I don't think it comes down to hardware for Samsung. You know, I've heard from people who know what the Galaxy S6, the next phone is going to be like. They're going to create one. It's going to be metal. Um, and they're going to have another version with that curved screen, kind of like the Galaxy Note Edge that launched last year. Mm -hmm. um, so on a hardware level, that's I don't think that's enough to differentiate anymore. There are plenty of people making metal phones that look really nice. Um, Samsung's big challenge is if they want to differentiate their devices, they need to do it on the software level. They need to come up with some unique experience um, that, you know, really sets it apart from other, all the other generic Android phones. And uh, nothing they've ever shown me um, in the past leads me to believe they can do that, at least not in this cycle. So I think it's going to be another tough year for them. All right. Well, I know you use an iPhone because we talked about the new Outlook for iOS. I want to get to that mm -hmm. in a second. But do you also have a Samsung phone or do you, are you purely yeah. iOS? No, I have um, I have a Galaxy S5 that you know they sent me to review, and I've been you know use that to test certain because Samsung and Apple are the two biggest companies I cover, so I have to be you know intimately with whatever they do. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I use the I switch between them a lot, and then whatever other phone I'm reviewing. So uh, but yeah, the iPhone 6 Plus is my my main phone. Yeah, I have the S5 and the 6, and mm -hmm. um, the S5 has some things. I was surprised, you know that 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 they have that the iPhone doesn't have, but mostly I just really like the iPhone better. So let's talk about the Outlook for iOS that came out today. You wrote an article about that and we talked about it briefly. Um, do you love it? I'm obsessed with it, it, which is really funny. I never thought I'd say, I was laughing with my colleagues today, but I never thought I'd say I love Outlook. I mean, <laughs> if you told me that like a year ago even, I was just like, would have thought it's crazy. But um, that, what a smart acquisition by Microsoft to buy that Accompli app. Um, it, it, it's first of all, it's very un Microsofty to make something that works well. Gmail and Yahoo and other major services. It's not just a, a Microsoft email app. It'll work with everything. It works with Dropbox. It syncs with Google Drive. It syncs with Google Calendar. Um, it's, I mean, it took like, yeah, you're showing the article I wrote. I mean, I wrote a quick, like, gut reaction of it, but it's, I could just tell from the beginning this thing was a winner. I deleted G the Gmail app from my phone. It's been clunky. Um, I tried Inbox. Inbox doesn't work very well for me, um, especially because it doesn't work with my corporate account for work. Um, it, th this is this is great. I mean, I really think Google whiffed. They should have bought Accompli instead of letting Microsoft take it. Right. Well, that was the other thing that Google did today. I don't know if you saw that, but for 24 hours today, you can get an Inbox invite because it's, a lot of people yeah. can't get them. You have to be invited. I thought that was hilarious. I got a press release in my uh, in my inbox today, um, shortly after this Accompli news hit or the Outlook news hit, and uh, it was totally that's totally a response. Um, yeah. They they know they're just getting their they're just getting it handed to them by Microsoft, which is hilarious. First of all, because you would never expect that to happen, um, and yeah, the Gmail app, I mean, frankly, has been gotten worse over time. It's uh, at least on iOS, it's gotten a little better on on Android, but it's it's slow. It doesn't load as quickly. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll get a push notification for a new message and then I open the app and it just sits there loading and nothing ever happens. Um, I was getting sick of it and I don't like the Apple, uh, email app either. So I was waiting for someone to come up with something like this. I'm so glad it's here. It's, it's going to take over my email life basically. <laughs> You're pretty excited about it. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm thanks. excited about email. That's that's crazy. <laughs> it is. Well, we spend a lot of time with email, so it's good to be Too excited about it. So thank you so much, Steve. What are you working on next? 
Uh, I'm getting ready for MWC, so I'll be in Barcelona um, in, what, a month and a half or, mm-hmm. yep. or so, a little March over a 1st, month. March 1st, I think, yeah. Yeah, so I'm getting ready for that, getting, uh, you know, HTC's big event, Samsung's big event will be there. Um, so, yeah, just kind of uh, preparing for that. I heard some big stuff coming around well, that time. Well, great. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Coming up, Nintendo tries to win over YouTubers and Facebook is following you. But first, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. Now it's even easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Here's why you'll love Squarespace. Now you can do live editing on one screen, making changes is easier with no more toggling to the preview mode. 14 new designs, giving you over 30 to choose from. Squarespace has design templates for everything, including musicians, artists, architects, restaurants, weddings, and e-commerce. Cover Pages is new with Squarespace 7. Choose from 10 new templates, perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand or personal identity. Use Getty Images for just $10 each. You can pick from thousands of professional Getty Images and use them on your site. Social media is built right in, so you can link your site to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, YouTube, Pinterest, and more. You can also use their mobile apps with the portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps. You can make changes to your site no matter where you are. It's incredibly easy to use, and if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24-7. It's also inexpensive. It starts at just $8 a month, and Squarespace takes care of hosting, so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. So start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website right now. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Nintendo has had a love-hate relationship with YouTubers over the past few years. This morning, they launched a creators program in an attempt to share advertising revenue with YouTube content creators. Here's how it works. If you like to upload videos of yourself playing Nintendo games, and I know that you do, you can register specific videos or entire channels with Nintendo. You then earn between 60% and 70% of the advertising proceeds. The rest goes to Nintendo. The company first announced this service nearly a year ago after waffling back and forth about enforcing their copyright on YouTube. The surface is in beta, but many popular YouTube's YouTubers are already giving it the thumbs down. Today, Facebook announced that they would soon begin testing a service called Place Tips, starting in New York City. If you have location services enabled, the Facebook app will try to guess where you where you are and if you're near a popular or interesting location, and then provide relevant content for that place. Now, this is essentially a way to keep Facebook users from using services like Google Now or Foursquare or Yelp that already do a pretty good job of knowing exactly where we are at all times and giving us relevant and useful information so that we forget how creepy it is that they know exactly where we are at all times. Facebook says you can opt out of the service. TechCrunch reports that social networking and news site Reddit today released its first transparency report, which detailed 55 government requests for user information in 2014. Reddit says they complied with 58% of those requests for user account registration data, log data, and content uploaded. Although Reddit says they never received a national security letter or any other classified request for user information, their report is part of a wave of transparency reports released in the past year after Edward Snowden's revelations on government surveillance. And finally, Apple might have sold a kajillion iPhones, but when I asked Siri who was going to win the Super Bowl, she totally blew me off. But according to Business Insider, Microsoft's digital assistant Cortana is calling the game. Cortana used a Bing predicts algorithm to predict every NFL game with 66.9% accuracy this season. For this Sunday's game, Cortana predicts a final score of Patriots 24, Seahawks 23. Now, perhaps GoDaddy should have talked to Cortana before they made that horrible Puppy Mill Super Bowl commercial. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it, or rather, Bing it. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And if you like what you see, tell a friend and subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. 
bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.